I can honestly say that I really do believe that we're in the midst of a revolution. The best-selling book of all time is now one of the best-selling apps of all time. God's definitely up to something here. And later, a live performance from Nicole C. Mullen on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Potential Republican presidential candidates met for their first debate Thursday night. They were all aiming for votes in the important primary state of South Carolina. Not all of the major names were there, but those who were took some strong positions. David Brody has this look at the debate and what voters had to say. In Greenville, South Carolina. The Greenville stage was certainly large enough to host plenty of Republican candidates, but for various reasons, only five showed up to debate. So with that, the contenders weighed in on the big question of the day. If you could raise your hand, if as president, you would put out a photo of a dead Osama bin Laden. Just to be sure, Mr. Kane, you would not. I would not. Fewer candidates means more primetime exposure for underdogs, like Tea Party favorite Herman Kane. Government doesn't create jobs. Businesses create jobs. We need to get government out of the way. For Rick Santorum, the debate was a chance to show off his views on social issues. He took that opportunity when asked about possible candidate Mitch Daniels' call for a truce on social issues during these tough financial times. I think anybody that would suggest that we call a truce on the moral issues doesn't understand what America is all about. Then there was the other underdog in the room, Gary Johnson, who was feeling a bit lonely up there. You're gonna, you're gonna, this you're, is like nine questions for all these guys and none for me. But the former New Mexico governor finally got a question on immigration, but his answer might not please conservatives. When it comes to putting the National Guard arm in arm across 2,000 miles of border, in my opinion, that would be a whole lot of money spent with very little, if any, benefit whatsoever. Meanwhile, Ron Paul continued to hammer home his theme of states' rights, even if that meant legalizing heroin. How many people here would use heroin if it was illegal? I bet nobody would put their hand, oh yeah, I need the government to take care of me. I don't want to use heroin, so I need these laws. Former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty weighed in on fighting radical jihadists. We need to call them by name. And they believe it's okay to kill innocent people in the name of their religion. It is not all of, of Islam. It is not all Muslims. But there is a subgroup who believe it's okay. In fact, it's their plan and design to kill innocent people. The debate stage inside was a bit empty. But outside, a much different story. Hundreds of Tea Party Americans took part in a freedom rally, complete with a prayer vigil as well. Socialism doesn't like us looking to God. Earlier, the Tea Party crowd gathered to hear speakers and candidates talk about fiscal and social issues. The crowd included some libertarians, but also an abundance of evangelicals. Josh Kimbrell heads up a state faith-based organization dedicated to uniting economic and social conservatives. Ultimately, a good economic policy and a good social policy are, are one and the same. You know, you can't you can't build long-term budget cuts, long-term reduce, re reducing the size of government on, on the backs of an expanded uh, welfare state, and you can't do that unless you have a strong family culture. Republican candidates will be looking for both evangelical and Tea Party support if they plan to make any noise in the presidential race. David Brody, CBN News, in Greenville, South Carolina. I think my floor director said it best during that piece. She said, who are these guys? We got 18 months to go before the nomination, so we're going to get used to all of them. And it's going to be a long haul to Iowa and then a longer haul to the convention floor and then a longer haul even still to November. Uh, get ready. This is going to be one uh, knockdown, drag out uh, fight. I, I, I think the gloves are well off and politics has really become a blood sport in our nation where you, you literally look to take out candidates. Uh, it's no longer a civil debate. It's how can I ruin them? Uh, so they're absolutely unelectable and that's how you win in today's game. It's a shame. Uh, it would be great to have real debates about real issues like the economy that are facing our country today. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get there. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN newsroom. Lee? 
Gordon Al Qaeda was considering a tax on U.S. trains on the upcoming anniversary of the September 11th attacks. That's according to information found in Osama bin Laden's compound in Pakistan. Counterterrorism officials say the plot involved derailing a U.S. train. They believe the plot was only, though, in the initial planning stages. The details were found on handwritten notes. Other intelligence gathered from the compound made up what officials are calling a, quote, terrorist wish list. But there's no sign that any of the plots were anything more than ambitions. The death of Osama bin Laden has been viewed as good news in most nations around the world, but some are unhappy about it, and they're not just in the Muslim Middle East. They're in places like Europe. Dale Hurd explains. If Americans ever needed an example of how different they are from Europeans, this could be it. Some members of the European media and political establishment upset over the killing of Osama bin Laden. While the news was met positively in most quarters in Europe, in Brussels, members of the European Union press corps wanted to know why the EU was not condemning what one reporter called the extrajudicial assassination of bin Laden by U.S. forces. This German headline says Obama's license to kill, and the assassination theme was echoed in France's Le Mans newspaper. Former German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt says the killing of bin Laden was clearly a violation of international law. And current German Chancellor Angela Merkel is under fire for sounding too pleased when she announced that bin Laden had been killed. Many Europeans who have never liked America's patriotism or America's willingness to use deadly force did not like the American celebrations they viewed on the news. The German state-run Deutsche Welle said many Germans have felt some distaste at the flag-waving raucous U.S. reaction to bin Laden's death. And the European media is speculating that President Obama, who's been very popular in Europe because he was viewed as the opposite of George W. Bush, has now lost some of his luster. Dale Hurd, CBN News. The Republican-controlled House was quick this week to pass a ban on any taxpayer funding for abortion. Now the real fight comes in the Democrat-controlled Senate. Mississippi Republican Roger Wicker is the main sponsor of the Senate bill, which he introduced Thursday. He admits it's an uphill battle. Every time uh, we have attempted to advance the pro-life cause through legislation, it has always started out uh, as an uphill battle. Even if Wicker, though, and his allies can't put together enough votes to pass the ban in the Senate, President Obama has already said he will veto the bill. The U.S. Air Force Academy now has a chapel designated for Earth-centered religions. It's called Falcon Circle, and it was dedicated on top of the hill that overlooks the main cadet chapel. It's aimed at reaching people of all Earth-based religions, including Wiccan, Paganism, New Age, and Druids. The Air Force Academy has been promoting religious tolerance since 2004. That's when a survey revealed some cadets feel ostracized because of their religious preferences. Americans across the country celebrated the National Day of Prayer Thursday. Center stage for the day's activities, the nation's capital. And Paul Strand was there. People from all around the nation gathered on their knees in a congressional conference room for this event, asking for God's mercy and blessing for America. Some people talk a lot about prayer. We do the praying on the National Day of Prayer, and this really is the most important day in our national life. Nothing compares to this day. Longtime Day of Prayer Chairman Shirley Dobson pointed out America's leaders have called upon their countrymen to call upon the Lord since 1775. This has been our heritage. This has been our tradition. International Prayer Ministry's Glenn Shepard asked folks to get to their knees for a time of corporate repentance, pointing out it's a mandate across the scriptures. Every word of God cries out for his people to repent. Not all Americans believe it's proper for the government to call for a day of prayer. Amanda Kanief at the Secular Coalition for America says it violates the separation of church and state. We do not believe the government should be in the business of telling people when or how to pray. Florida Congressman Alan West couldn't disagree more. This America is rooted in a Judeo-Christian faith tradition, which finds its cornerstone of communication, prayer. Kay Seidhammer just moved to Washington from California, where during earlier days of prayer... We would gather around our flagpoles and we would pray. And so this is just an awesome opportunity to be here in our nation's capital. Nancy Bonjour came from Michigan to pray because of the sad state of the economy, as well as... The state of our morals, and we need to be on our faces before God. 
A special emphasis at this year's prayer time was honoring America's wounded warriors, disabled fighting for their country. And one of America's most beloved disabled Christians was named the honorary chairman of this year's National Day of Prayer. Johnny Erickson Tata told CBN News her main message is Americans mustn't give up hope in dark times. Our God is a great refuge and a fortress, and it is in our God that we put our trust. And he is our inspiration because we know that good will ultimately triumph. Tata was quoting Psalms 91 there, which just happens to be the inspiration for this year's National Day of Prayer theme. A mighty fortress is our God. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Capitol Hill. The idea of a National Day of Prayer has been around longer than the United States itself. The Continental Congress first issued a proclamation in 1775, setting aside a day to pray. Congress established an annual day of prayer in 1952, and in 1988, President Ronald Reagan set the date as the first Thursday in May. President Obama affirmed this year's event, saying prayer has played an important role in shaping our nation's leaders. Gordon? It's also played a very important role in just shaping our country. When you go back to the Amer American Revolution, you find the battle cry, uh, no king but Jesus. Uh, that is what our nation was founded on. That's how it started. And if you look at the history of America, uh, our quest for freedom began with the Great Awakening of uh, 1735. And from there, uh, it was established. Let, let us have our king be King Jesus. Terry? Well, up next, they're helping give faith to the Facebook generation. I'll take my daily reading and uh, I'll share it and I'll get responses from friends or maybe even people that I don't know because of a retweet or something like that. Meet the brains behind the Bible app next. In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct buy club is already awarded over a million dollars and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local direct buy club where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? Next week. They say you have the right to remain silent. The man who robbed from the police. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And gave to the mafia. And at that point, I realized I was just way in over my head. A con man gets caught. As they led me into this jail cell, they said, this is what we call jailhouse justice. Monday on The 700 Club. Well, do you need a Bible with more than 50 translations and dozens of reading plans? Well, there's an app for that. One church in Oklahoma has released a free Bible application that has become one of the most downloaded in the world. Wendy Griffith has that story. In today's world, your cell phone is so much more than just a phone. It's your internet, your TV, your video game, and now it's even your Bible? In 2008, the folks here at LifeChurch.tv in Edmond, Oklahoma, created a free Bible application called YouVersion that you can download to your iPhone or mobile device. They expected around 70 to 80,000 people to sign up in the first year. Instead, they got 80,000 people in the first three days. Quickly, we looked at those results and said, okay, God's definitely up to something here. Today, more than 16 million people have downloaded the free Bible app to their phone or mobile device, and folks here at LifeChurch.tv say that's just the beginning. I try to not use the word revolution lightly, but with seeing how God's used it over the last few years, I can honestly say that I really do believe that we're in the midst of a revolution as it relates to scripture engagement. To download the Bible app to your iPhone or iPad, 
Just go to what's known as the App Store on iTunes or wherever you can download applications. There, just type in Bible. Then you'll see the various Bible icons. Just click on that. So once you've downloaded the Bible app, you can now go to any book of the Bible you want to read. I'm on Matthew 18 right now. You can also decide which reading plan you want to participate in, if any. And you can even decide which version of the Bible you want to read. YouVersion offers 50 versions. I like New King James. If we can just make the Bible free, make it easy for people to read, and make it easy for people to share via Facebook and Twitter and these social networks that are online, that it's very, very viral and people love to engage with the Bible and love to share it with others. People who use the YouVersion Bible app say it's completely changed the way they read the Bible. Just a few weeks ago I was standing in line at Walmart and it was a long line and I thought this is a perfect opportunity to go into my Bible reading so I sat there and just read it right there in the Walmart line. I'm really big into social media. So really, YouVersion has become part of my testimony because I'll take my daily reading and uh, I'll share it and I'll get responses from friends or maybe even people that I don't know because of a retweet or something like that. My relationship with God is, has just been able to come first. I carry him with me. His word is just always with me. I was on a reading plan and uh, I'd fallen off, I hadn't read it in a couple of uh, days. And so I got, a, I got an email from YouVersion saying, hey, let's pick it back up, you can do it. You can even start over if you'd like. Grunwald says with the Bible now as close as your phone, he's hopeful it will help reverse the trend of less Bible reading. But I actually believe it's possible that we could have the most Bible engaged generation in history. Currently, the Bible app is in English, Spanish, and Norwegian? Because you're Norwegian? No, I'm not Norwegian. Uh, you know, but we, we have it available in Norwegian because we have partners in Norway that helped us and we're passionate about bringing it to their language. But, um, but this year we're looking at adding eight major languages in addition to those three. Grunwald says he's humbled by the great success God has given them and excited about the future. Our eyes and our faith are set on what could be, you know, could, could we see a half a billion people, you know, that do it? Could we see a, the, a Facebook sized generation of people that are engaging with scripture and not just trading photos or posting on each other's walls? Is that possible to, to see today? And we really believe it is. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Edmond, Oklahoma. Well, if you're having trouble navigating the digital revolution, Phil Cook is here to help. He's the author of the new book, Jolt, Get the Jump on a World That's Constantly Changing. And Phil, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Enjoy being you, back. You know these guys. I know these guys way. very well. They do, they're doing some remarkable things. It's going to change the paradigm out there when it comes to Bible reading and how we engage the Bible. Well, I've noticed in church that, you know, it used to be if you, if you brought out a device during church, everybody looked at you like, you know, what, what planet are you on? You're heathen. And, and now yeah. it's it's part yeah. of the sermon where you follow along in your Bible app. That's right. What what the scriptures are, and then uh, I actually not my church, but I've, I've heard in other churches where the the pastor is encouraging, you know, tweet me during the sermon if you've yeah. got questions. And, I've been and to another number of churches where they the pastor encourages people get out your cell phone or your iPad or your Kindle and let's let's Twitter and. And it's, it's, the search has changed everything, the ability to search for stuff. So with my old Bible, I was going through pages at 90 miles an hour trying to find a scripture I thought I could remember. Now I just search for it and bam, it's instantly there. So yeah, in church you're going to see a lot of changes, I think. <laughs> We've come a long way since <laughs> Jesus stood up in the synagogue and opened a scroll. Oh, we have come a long way. We have come a long way. There's no question about it. And, and the funny thing is Christians used to be on the cutting edge of that kind of change. I remember, well, you know, in the early yeah. 1800s, there were, I think, six steam-driven presses, state-of-the-art printing presses in America. Six were, I mean, five of them were owned by the American Bible Society. So Christians were at the forefront of technology, but sadly, over the years, we've kind of gone back and gone back and fallen behind. And, and I think it's time for Christians to re-embrace this changing culture. You know, the, Jesus said, you know, the Bible says God's Word never changes, but trust me, everything else does. And uh, if we don't understand how to live in that world and navigate it, we're going to fall behind. Well, you're talking to a guy who's crossed the 50-year-old threshold, and I, yeah. uh, on, on the demographics, <laughs> I am now resistant to change. Oh, yeah. Any new Absolutely. device, mm -hmm. I don't want to learn, and I'm already finding on my new smartphone, there's some icons 
that oh, if yeah. it's not intuitive, I don't ever go there. That's true. Um, what What would you tell someone like me? Uh, how, how do I How do I get through that? Well, I'll tell you something that's interesting. I read a study the other day that indicated 83 percent of employees in America have been passed over for a promotion because they couldn't make the changes necessary to go to the next level. That's how 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 huge this thing is. And so I think there are tools we need to understand that will help us embrace these kind of changes. Here's the deal. Change is, is here. It's not coming. It's here. And it's here whether we like it or not or whether we're, whether we're ready. Mm -hmm. And it's not just technology. It's not just about your cell phone. It's about our lifestyles and politics and education and, and lifestyles. It's even, it's even about our morals and values. I mean, doesn't it seem in the last, what, 20 years that our morals and values have just been shifting like crazy in this country. So it's really a question of, I believe Christians have got to embrace change, not fear it, but embrace it in order to use it for the, to, to get our story told and get out there and make a difference. Well, uh, you're, in your book, you talk about there's some things, uh, some old things we need to really yeah. get rid of. What are they? Absolutely. There's a lot of, you know, fear is the biggest thing. I tell you, one of the things I always uh, see people do, they're, they're terrified of hitting the wall or hitting bottom. It's funny. This is my 20-year anniversary. This month is my 20-year year anniversary of getting fired. And uh, when I was 36 years old, had two small kids. <laughs> yeah. Had two small kids. It, well, you know what? It was I the got best thing that ever happened. It was. I got lulled into this regular paycheck. I thought, oh, you know, it's a good church. My kids are in good schools. We have our friends here. And uh, I think God had to step in fire me to get me out of that. It was a jolt. My wife and I sat on the bed and cried a little bit and then realized we got to move on. And it, looking back now, 20 years, it's the best thing that ever happened. So I think we need to learn to embrace the wall. When we hit bottom, we think it's the worst thing that could happen. But people hate change so much, we fight it to the very end. And sometimes hitting the wall could be the very best thing that could ever happen. I've read some studies that say you know, the average American today will go through three careers. Yeah, at least. And which means reinventing yourself mm -hmm. three times in terms oh, yeah. of what you do. But for, I, I would join with others, that's scary. Very scary. Because where do you yeah. find your place as, as you relaunch yourself? Yeah. Where do you find your place? One of the things I've discovered is people need to be much more open to personal growth. You know, I'm always reading and studying and finding out what's new. I, I, I'm constantly meeting people that just don't ever read. They don't read the newspaper. They don't watch the news on TV. They're not aware of changes that are going on. And I think part of it is we just need to be open to it. We need to be really, really open. I, I, one of the challenges we face, I think, is we all are so distracted. You know, when I researched my book, one of the things I realized is most people fail in life, not because they aren't committed, not because they're not qualified or they don't try, but they fail simply because they get distracted. We get hmm. so distracted from everything. And we live in this ADD culture with Twitter and Facebook and blogging. And um, sometimes we need to relearn the art of focus. And that can change everything. <laughs> How do you stop the emails? That's hard. I, I'm a big believer in managing emails. You know, my tip, never answer your email in the morning. You mm. know, go into, we, we go into work, and the first thing we do is pop open that computer well, and check our email. I have to do it in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah, but, you, you know, you end up at 11 <laughs> o'clock, and you're still answering email. 12 o'clock, you're still, you get sucked into this right, vortex. A week later, I'm still answering uh, Yeah. I say go into work and do the most important thing you have to do that day. And mm. as soon as that's done, hey, check your email. Check it all you want. But so I should wait till after the show to check it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's, it's like an addiction. You can't. It's hard. <laughs> I, I need my smartphone right now. I feel like yeah, I need That was them. right. <laughs> um, how important is it to have a goal that, that you're, you're not just sort of drifting, but you're really trying to attain something? I, I like goals. Goals never work for me, though. Mm. You know, it's really funny. I, I, goals are important, and if they work for, for anybody watching, I think it's great. I'm more growth-oriented. I find that when I hit a goal, I'm done. What do I do next? But when you're growth oriented, when you're always trying to learn something new and, and explore something new, that's what gives me the focus. And that never stops. I mean, I hope on my deathbed, there's a book on my nightstand. Uh, I'm always trying to it's learn something be a new. Now. It's, right. it's going to be an iPad. Yeah, no question <laughs> about it. Embrace the change. <laughs> That's true. And, I, and I'm gradually, you know, I've downloaded my, with my own book, I've downloaded the iPad version and I'm getting used to it. So it's coming along. <laughs> what would you tell the average pastor today? Uh, in terms of how, wh where do you see church mm -hmm. in another decade? I was reading this morning in Matthew uh, when Jesus ch chastised the religious leaders of his day for not understanding the signs of the times. And so I think one, one of my encouragement to pastors would be there's a lot of signs out there that we're not paying attention to. We used to live in this Christian bubble, and uh, we used to think as long as I'm preaching the Word of God, that's all that matters. Well, Preach the Word of God, but understand that the world is changing, and if we don't stay engaged with this culture that's changing around us, 
we'll lose touch with the very people we're trying to reach. So I, I think there's no question that you need to be aware, open your eyes, see what's happening out there in the world, and engage where you can. Be a part of that, and, and it will make a huge difference in your ministry. All right. Jolt. Get the jump on a world that's constantly changing. Uh, it's available in bookstores uh, if you want to go the old-fashioned route. <laughs> it's also available on um, uh, all the various Internet spots where you can buy books. If you want to hear more from Phil Cook, tune in on Monday's episode of 700 Club Interactive. It's going to air at 930 Eastern on ABC Family Channel. You can also get more tips on Jolt uh, in, in, a, in his book. So, Jolt, get the jump on a world that's constantly changing. And, Phil, thank you for being thank with you. us. Thank you. All right. Terry, over to you. Well, coming up, she's topped the charts with her gospel songs for nearly 20 years. Now, Nicole C. Mullen is singing a different tune. She's here with us live. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We asked CBN.com users how we could make our website easier to use. And we listened. Hey, there's family, there's health, there's everything I'm interested in right here. The click of a mouse and I'm there. The information opens up a whole lot quicker. Yeah, yeah it's much yeah. faster. It yeah. really there is. Check this out. Okay, so you can see all the different things that I have done. Anyone can enjoy this site. It's very easy to find anything. The new CBN.com has been redesigned with you in mind, making it faster to find your favorite 700 Club stories, musical guests, or online community with special features. You can find what you're looking for, and then you can just Go to it. It's really easy to read and move through. I will use this site a whole lot more now. And it's really easy on the eye, so you can spend a lot of time on it. This okay. new homepage is wonderful, so thank you. It's so easy to use. Oh, you're welcome. I, I, put it, I did it myself. Well, good. Yeah. Because I love the new look and feel <laughs> of it. Visit the new CBN.com today. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried. And I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there. I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. To listen to our top songs of the week, go to CBN Radio at CBN.com. Well, through her 20 years in Christian music, Nicole C. Mullen has been a pioneer, a businesswoman, and also an inspiration to young women all around the country. Well, now she's adding one more accomplishment to her resume as a worship leader. Nicole C. Mullen is not only an award-winning singer and songwriter, but she stays busy in Franklin, Tennessee. She helps young girls sew, sing, and study in her baby girls club. Her other organization's team, NCM, recruits young people to perform on stage with her in her concerts. Nicole is known for her spunky style, but she'll show you a softer side with her first worship CD called Captivated. Welcome back to the 700 Club singer and songwriter, Nicole C. Mullen. It's wonderful oh, to have you back. Thank you. We love when you come. The audience fills up. And Everybody wants here. to see you. I love it. You're about to be inducted into the Christian Hall of Fame. What does that yes. mean? Well, I'm very honored to have that privilege. Um, but I don't think I'm old enough, for real. <laughs> I don't either. Yo, yo, I'm older than Brittany, younger than Janet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> and, you know, I started this thing when I was about two, so, you know, that made me, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, exactly. <laughs> So I'm very, very honored. Um, I'm humbled at the same time. You have been so successful in gospel music. Now moving into worship, how, how did they differ and why the transition? Well, actually, I went to put the pen to the paper, and I plan on writing Funkabilly by Nature, which is the style of music that uh -huh. I do. Of course, the message is still Christian and, and, you know, talking about the Lord. But 
I went to write, and before I knew it, I kept getting these downloads of worship songs, songs straight from the scriptures, songs that were my prayers, wow. songs that I felt like the Lord was telling me. And so before I knew it, I had this body of work, and I said, what do I do with it? I asked friends, and I asked my husband. And before I knew it, my husband set me up with Ed Cash. He's a producer. And um, we had a worship album. And I tell the Lord often that, you know, I want to be a secretary. Like, yes. what's on your heart today? <laughs> I'll write it down. And then I feel like I'm called to be the mail carrier. Yeah. Then show me where I'm supposed to deliver it. And so. Well, we feel like you do that when we listen to your music. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's, there, there's a, a, a poetic, oh. you know, depth to it that, that is the voice of God, I thank think. Thank you. That's and the it. Lord's doing. In your singing career, you've had such an opportunity to help young girls. In fact, I, I had just said to Nicole, well, how are your girls doing? Because I feel like you have daughters, yes. and you do and have I spiritual do. daughters. Yes. You have a daughter, yes. <laughs> biologically. But, a lot of spiritual yeah. daughters. <laughs> but tell me about your Baby Girls Club. Baby Girls Club, we started many years ago, and it, it was my daughter, my one daughter, who actually gave me the idea. And she said, Mom, why don't we do with other girls the things that you and I do together? Mm. And before I knew it, we were getting girls together. We were sewing, dancing, playing guitar. We were talking. We were memorizing scripture. Now mm. we do all of the above, and we add homework with it. And it's not just myself wow. doing it now. It's me and a lot of other women pouring into young girls' lives, girls from the inner cities, girls from the suburbs, girls with mom and dad at home and girls without mom or dad at home. They live with their grandparents or in the system. And so we love on them. And we do our best to inspire them toward Jesus Christ and let them know that he has a plan for their lives, regardless of where they've come from. So this has become bigger than you'd ever imagined. I mean, your daughter's 17. She's, so 17. she's getting ready to, to yes. move on with her yes. life. But Baby Girls Club will keep going? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. I have someone run, who runs it now, Lasagna Thompson. She's over it. And so she becomes like the mama bear while I'm out. But when I'm in town, that's where I'm at. Between you know Mondays and Thursdays, I'm doing the mentorship programs that we have. I want to talk a little bit about your latest release. It's called Captivated, beautiful cover. And there is a song called Captivated mm -hmm. that was written by a 12-year-old girl, mm -hmm. you. Yes. Well, it's called I'll Praise Your Holy Name. I'll Praise Your Holy On Name. On Captivated, you're you right. Wrote. When I was 12, it was my very first offering to the Lord. Wow. And um, I wrote it as a worship song to Him. And I'm really um, convinced that had I not written the first one, I don't believe he would have entrusted me with the redeemers and the, on my yes. knees and the call on Jesus. And so for me, it's yeah. a testament that if we're faithful with the small, if we give him our loaves and our fish, he's able to take it and feed the multitudes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I know you pray for every time you make yes. a release. But when someone listens to Captivated, because this is this, is this new yes. sort of direction that God has you going in, what do you want them to come away with? Oh, um, a sense of the wonder of who God really is and his love for them and how he can take broken pieces and make masterpieces out of them. And that's what I testify to that he's done in my life, and that's what he's willing and wants to do in their lives as well. What are you going to sing for us today? My first single is called Kingdom Come. And in a world like today, where everywhere we look, there's something new, a new disaster, or a coup, or an earthquake, or natural disaster, um, that we need for the kingdom of God to be revealed, that which is invisible, to become visible to all. I pray so, that all the time. Yes. It's, it's almost become a, a hard cry Same for us here. in this day and age, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm going to let you move over to all where righty. you're going to sing. It's all so right. wonderful to have you back. Thank and you. while Nicole is getting ready, I want to mention again that this newest release is called Captivated. And you will be as you listen to it. It's available wherever albums are sold. If you want to hear more from Nicole, I want you to know we have a special behind-the-scenes interview that we did with her. If you'd like to see that, just log on to CBN.com and click on the In the Green Room link. But right now, to bless us today, here is Nicole C. Mullen with the song, Kingdom Come.
Question? Send us yours now on CBN.com. We'll bring it online with your questions from our live chat room on today's 700 Club. Come on and cross over to the all new cross. an ounce of gold buys you two fine suits. In ancient Rome, that same ounce of gold bought you two fine togas. For over 5,000 years, gold has maintained its store of value. Once upon a time, the U.S. dollar was as good as gold because it was backed by gold. But the value of all paper money sooner or later falls to zero. Printing paper money is like an unlimited credit card for politicians until history cancels their credit line. The good news is that they can't print gold. So when you put part of your nest egg in gold, it becomes safe from politicians crashing the dollar. Find out more about the best performing assets of the 21st century from the best company in the country, Swiss America. Call or visit online now for their free educational kit. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is warning that unless action is taken to hold down global food prices, the consequences will be grave. Speaking from Rome, Clinton said the combination of food shortages and rising prices could cause widespread destabilization, and that could lead to a repeat of the food crisis of about four years ago that started riots in dozens of countries. Since last June, the U.N. estimates that 44 million people have been pushed into poverty due to rising food prices. Clinton says to help protect people and communities, the world must take action now. Operation Blessing is in Alabama, aiding the survivors of the deadly tornadoes that devastated much of the South. Teams are helping residents remove debris, place tarps over their roofs, and basically clean up. Operation Blessing has served more than 10,000 meals to relieve personnel and residents. They're based out of Westwood Baptist Church in Birmingham. And you can find out more about Operation Blessing by going to its website at ob.org. Gordon and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened in Israel. Come sail the Sea of Galilee where Jesus calmed a raging storm. 
Experience Jerusalem, where Jesus restored a paralyzed man. Explore Capernaum, where Jesus spoke a centurion servant into health. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit GoIsrael.com. Come visit Israel. Do you take fish oil? There's an omega-3 supplement that's better than regular fish oil. Staying healthy, it's not easy. I exercise regularly and eat lots of fruits and vegetables. I used to take a fish oil supplement too, but then I discovered something better than regular fish oil. Arctic Wonder Omega-3 Krill Oil. It's from the makers of One-A-Day, so I know I can trust it. The Omega-3s in Arctic Wonder both support heart health and are scientifically proven to be better absorbed than regular fish oil. You'd have to take six of these fish oil soft gels to get the strength of just two Arctic Wonder soft gels. The Arctic Wonder does not have an aftertaste. They go down real easy. Arctic Wonder isn't just good for your heart. It also supports healthy brain function and a healthy immune system. This is one of the products that I plan to take for the rest of my life. Arctic Wonder is from One A Day and not available in stores. For a special trial offer, call or go online now. Call 1-800-409-7339. That's 1-800-409-7339. Or go online to tryarcticwonder.com now. Next week. They say you have the right to remain silent. The man who robbed from the police. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And gave to the mafia. And at that point, I realized I was just weighing over my head. A con man gets caught. As they led me into this jail cell, they said, this is what we call jailhouse justice. Monday on The 700 Club. Well, for many young boys, life is about school, sports, video games. But that wasn't the case for a Cambodian boy named Siv Leng. He spent most of his time just trying to find his next meal. For fun, 12-year-old Sivling enjoys picking patria, a sweet Cambodian fruit with his friends. But just a few years ago, finding fruit meant survival for this young boy. When his parents died, Sivling and his brother went to live with an aunt. But without a steady income, sometimes the only food the boys had to eat was fruit they could find for themselves. My aunt couldn't take care of us. I was hungry all the time. When Sivling looked at the other children in their Cambodian village, he couldn't help but long for a better life. They had food to eat, and they went to school. I wanted those things so badly. Then Sivling's aunt heard about a church which had set up a children's home supported by CBN's Orphan's Promise. They were happy to take in Sivling and his brothers. There, Sivling remembers having his first full meal ever. The food was delicious and everyone was very friendly. Since my first night here, I've been sleeping well. Sivling and his brother now eat three meals a day, thanks to CBN's support. But Orphan's Promise did something else for the children. We built them a school, the only Christian school on the entire island off of Cambodia's coast. Today, Sivling and 200 other children are learning to read and write, and Sivling's favorite book is the Bible. Since coming to the home, he's even prayed to receive Jesus as his savior. I am very happy here. I have hope and love. I thank Jesus for bringing me to this home. You know, sometimes we think that people, and especially children who've never had a lot, don't miss what they haven't had. That's not really true. Children know when they don't have a family. They know when they don't have education and a hope for the future. They know when they're hungry. Almost every child that I know that's involved with a program that Orphans Promise sponsors, we are a CBN program, they're hungry. And one of the first things they say is, I have food here. You know, kids can't learn when they're hungry. They don't want to hear about the opportunity of knowing a God who loves them when their stomachs are growling. We begin with the food and then we give them things that matter, things that last a lifetime and eternity, things that bring hope into future. And we can only do that when you make it possible for us to do it. So we're asking you to partner with us as 700 Club members. You know, when you join the 700 Club, it's just 65 cents a day, $20 a month. But the moment you make that phone call, you become a world changer. You really are touching and changing lives. And this young boy represents just an example of how much you're doing around the world. 
Will you go to your phone and call right now? Our number is even toll free. It's so simple. 1-800-759-0700. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. When you do, we want to send you as a way of saying thank you for caring about others. The Law of Expectation. This is a dual teaching, one by Gordon and one by Pat, and you're going to love it. It will really touch your own walk and draw you closer to the Lord. I love the truth of that. You can expect great things in your life, and you can. Our God is a great God. When you call, will you use something we call Pledge Express? It means your bank does all the work. It's electronic monthly giving. Saves us a lot in administrative costs so that we can put even more of your gift right into the field. And we want to send you as a thank you for using Pledge Express. Power for life. These teachings will come to you every month. They're the teachings we get here corporately at CBN, and we'd love to share them with you as you in move forward in your own life and your own walk with the Lord. So call right now. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club, and I want to do it using Pledge Express. Gordon? Well, still ahead, our special Mother's Day tribute. Plus, your questions from our live chat room, so don't go away. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. Just like you did for Jamal and his family. Brain aneurysms and multiple blood clots caused Jamal's mom to lose her job and then their home. Jamal was filled with fear, wondering about his future. Then he and his family found housing, food, and job training at a ministry supported by CBN. Jamal is now in college and his family is doing well because you cared. So please, watch for this mailing and sit in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there. Remember when you didn't have to spend a lot to give mom something special on Mother's Day? With Pro Flowers, that's still true. Send mom a gift she'll love. A dozen roses for just $19.99. That's 50% in savings. Order now and mom also gets our elegant glass vase plus your personalized card free. Hurry, supplies are limited. Or double the roses plus this premium pink vase for just $10 more. Take advantage of this amazing TV offer. Go to proflowers.com. Look for the microphone in the upper right corner. Enter CBN in the box and you're ready to send mom roses for Mother's Day. It makes me feel really good knowing that I've made her happy with flowers. Just trying to say I love you and I'm thinking about you. And I was really excited so, to get the roses. They were just beautiful. This amazing TV offer is 50% off retail pricing, but only if you go to proflowers.com, look for the microphone in the upper right corner, enter CBN in the box, or call toll-free 1-800-FRESHEST and mention TV. Go online and order now. Well, this sun Sunday is Mother's Day, and it's a day when we can express our appreciation for our moms.
time this Sunday to just say Happy Mother's Day to your mother. And if my mother is watching, a big shout out to you. You're the saint of the Robertson <laughs> family. You were the glue that held us all together. And I love you. And a Happy Mother's Day, Mom. And I will see you definitely on Sunday. And for all the orphans of the world <laughs> in over 50 countries, <laughs> Uh, Terry, a very special Mother's Day Thank to you. you, and we've got some flowers for oh. you oh my to help you celebrate. Wow, and, thank you. Um, oh, they're beautiful. I jokingly refer to you as Earth Mother <laughs> to the world, but uh, <laughs> what you do for orphans around the world is just unbelievable, and how you sacrifice and travel and take care of them, and it's absolutely wonderful. So you happy know, I had, Day. thank you so much. These are beautiful. That's so thoughtful of you. You know, when I was in Africa the last time, I had a, a I was working with our Nigeria crew, and this is a sort of an African tradition, but they all called me. I mean, they were grown ups, and they all called me Mama Terry. <laughs> <laughs> it went, I don't, I don't okay, I don't know good. if I thought, yeah, I got to think about that. I got, <laughs> Now I find myself emailing them and signing it. Mama Terry, I'm thinking, what am I doing? The last time I was in the Philippines, uh, they all were calling me Lolo Gordon, which means grandfather in Tagalog. So, um, and I I was looking at them funny, like, you know, I don't, I don't feel like a Lolo. And they said, well, your hair is gray. Yeah, which is supposed to be a sign of of oh, a sign of deep respect and honor, and um, yeah. I, I didn't receive so I it guess that I way. I don't, be know, I don't know what's up. wrong with me. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, in honor of Mother's Day, we've got a, a we've got a live chat question for you, Terry. Okay. And Angela says, Terry, as a mother, I feel like there's never enough of me to go around. Uh, I imagine you felt that way on occasion. And on rare occasion that I do take time for myself, I have mommy guilt. How do you deal with this? Yeah. Well, it's taken me a long time to get to the place where I could get past that. But what I came to realize when there finally wasn't enough to me of me to go around because I'd spent myself, that if you don't take that time to refill, you don't have anything to give. Mm. And hopefully some of that refill time includes time of refreshment with the Lord. He just kind of puts it all back in order again, you know, makes you feel like you're not losing your mind. It really it really has some, some sane purpose to all of it. And I think that... Um, Also, I had to come to the realization that I was not the answer to everything that my children needed, especially now that my kids have gotten older. I'm finding that, that Mm. my life is supposed to be pushing them to him. And if my life is drawing them to me, then I'm doing something wrong. And so, you know, you kind of, in a mom's heart, there's that thing that says, I need to be all things to all of Mm -hmm. these people in my household. And you really need to... Ask and the for Lord a time to, you are. Yeah, for a time you are, and it is very draining. But you need those, those mommy moments. I suggest a warm, <laughs> warm bath. Every a warm once bath. In a, while. a box of chocolates. Yeah, yeah that, well, that works for me. We all know that, right? <laughs> a nice cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and and one more. You know, there, in marriage, there's this thing called a husband. Yeah. And every once in a while, you can say here. Yeah. You know, I, I need to take some time. I highly recommend um, that. And uh, I, used, yeah, I used to delight in, in giving Catherine a day off here. Yeah. You know, it's, it's oh, my, I it's think my it's turn. So, it's not just your turn. It's so and important And then she would delight children. in giving yeah. them to me at 4 a.m. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> See, it all has it's, a sort of a symbiotic flow to your it. Turn. <laughs> Okay, this is a question. Carolyn says, I'm a 35-year-old mother of three. I've done everything you can imagine that's bad in this life. Now I'm ready to turn my life over to God and follow him. How do I hear God's voice? I don't want to make the wrong decisions again. Hmm. Uh, Carolyn, the best way to hear God's voice is open the Bible and start reading that. It's God's love letter to all his children. And just, just immerse yourself in it. Uh, I'd encourage you to start with the Gospel of John. That's a Gospel of love. Um, and then read all four of the Gospels and, and just spend time meditating. And if you want to, just read the, the verses in red. And those are the words of Jesus. And the more you familiar, get familiar with those, uh, then, you, then you understand his voice. And then there's a wonderful prayer that Paul put in, in the Bible, and that is that uh, God would open our ears and open our eyes and give us a heart to understand. And that's a prayer you can pray. And literally you can pray it every day. And just say, Jesus, I want to hear your voice. 
Holy Spirit, I want to I want to know you. I, 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 you. You say you're my helper, you're my friend. Well, I want to know you. And and the more you do that, the more you seek His face. Uh, and the more you get used to his voice, the more you get. It's uh, my father calls it the law of use. When you put things to use and start asking, then you get them and you get very familiar with that voice and you don't have to worry about other strange voices. Jesus says specifically, if you ask God for bread, he'll give you a bread. He won't give you a stone. So if you ask God to speak to you, he'll do that for you and he'll open your ears. This is CK who asks, is it stealing to buy a lot of groceries with very little money, like on the TLC show, Extreme Couponing? If you got the coupon, it's not stealing. That's right. Um, that's called marketing. <laughs> 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 and they, they want you to do that because they want to expose you to their product so you'll come buy, back and buy it without a coupon the next time. Uh, but I'm all for people saving money. You know, I'm, I'm Scottish, and so I, I got cheap all in my blood, and, and I, I hate spending money if I don't have to. So, you know, I, I tend to look for quality and durability in, in what I buy. I, I don't go for fads, but if you got a coupon, use it. That's not stealing. Yeah, I agree. This is Anonymous who says, in front of his class, my nine-year-old mm. son said he hates his life oh and wants to take poison and die. What can I do? Uh, I, I run to counseling. Amen. This is not one where you want to take any chances. If your nine-year-old is expressing that kind of, of deep discontent with just the mere fact he's alive, you, you need help and you need professional help. Uh, I would let your pastor know. Uh, I would do it in a confidential way. You don't want to uh, brand him forever as, you know, a suicide risk. But if he's expressing those words, uh, he needs counseling. This is a cry for help. And when children give you a cry for help, it's time for the parents to come running with the help that they need. Well, that's all the time we have for this program. We leave you these words from Romans 5. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Spread a little bit of that love back to your mother this Sunday. God bless you. Come on and cross over to the all-new Cross Country Radio from CBN.com.